Now, I like salt more than the average person, I'm here to tell you, but should we be adding Epsom salts to our garden? Is it fact or fiction? Let's crack that nut right here on the Backyard Gardens podcast. To have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds and must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. Welcome to the Backyard Gardens Podcast, where we talk about all things gardening. We are your host, Ben in Batavia, and you can find me gardening in the country. And you'll find me gardening in the city. Get ready as we dig deep into this wonderful world of gardening, where we learn to grow and grow for change. All right, everybody, before we get started, please, we are a patron-run podcast, so if you'd like to support us and keep the show going, please join us on Patreon. We right now are about to hit a milestone. We get a couple more. Then we will do uh, put all the patrons' names into a drawing, and Batavia has announced that it will be a Crown Royal bag, to be specific, and we will pick a name out, and they will be on a one-on-one Zoom call with us. So come join us and get those two free episodes a month and all the other good stuff, and uh, check us out on YouTube. So, Epsom salts. I was pulling up, and I just said, I'm just going to the straight to the farmer's almanac, because I assumed that they would dispel this. I have, All right, go ahead. I have another website that I use, too, So, and I, I have to be honest when it comes time, but um, yeah. I've often heard multiple things about this, and I was, um, I was interviewing somebody for a project that we're working on, and I said, you know, do you use Epsom salts in your garden? She goes, hell no. And I was, and she's a professional. And I was like, why not? She's like, why would I put a professional gardener by the state of the horticultural department of the extension service of North Carolina? And she's like, why the hell would I add salt to my garden? And I was like, "Mm, okay. And so that led me down the path to look at Epsom salts more in depth than I had ever done. Cause I use it for my body. It's great. If I'm hurt, I got to use some now, <laughs> but, um, you know, a lot of people, if you watch social media, they swear by, and I know, I know that I'm going to get crucified for what I'm going to say on this podcast today and go ahead, light me up in the comments, go for it. Cause there's nothing <laughs> you can do to change my mind. But um, I appreciate everybody for what they do in their garden. And it's your garden. You can do what you want. That being said, let's talk about those Epsom salts. Because uh, what is your website? So what does the Farmer's Almanac say? Let's just start there. I'm going to give you a spoiler. I'm greatly disappointed that the far- Farmer's Almanac says, adding Epsom salt to your soil before planting vegetables gives it a boost of magnesium. It also says test soil for deficiencies first. You can also sprinkle Epsom salt around your plants for healthier foilage. At one to two t- or one to one tablespoon per twelve inches of height. Like they had a whole like routine here. I'm shocked. Well let's 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 stop there and break that down. I, I like where they're going. So I don't know. There is a separate article that I'll skim over as you you dig into liking this it's from march 2020 well the reason why i like it is because they gave us our topic point so let's talk about magnesium mm-hmm, mm-hmm. how much magnesium do you need in your garden i don't know i just basically feed the plants until they say no more <laughs> now we all know that's not true um so <laughs> they don't need a lot of magnesium Okay. Um, what magnesium is required by the plant can come from the soil with no issue because you don't really get a magnesium. If a gardening company is not making a magnesium additive like on the regular, then that mm-hmm. should be a trigger for you. You know what I mean? And so that's a really important thing to realize is it, it you know, it'll add magnesium and I believe uh, sulfur. And they are mm-hmm. essential elements, but they don't need to be constantly fed to it. So they're, they aid in photosynthesis and they help absorb the three macronutrients. But there's another thing that's underlying. And then they said, in the same breath, test your soil. Mm-hmm. And here's my issue. <laughs> if you're adding Epsom salts, you're probably masking a bigger problem inside of your garden. 
And one Come day on somebody. One day it will catch up to you. Okay. So last episode <laughs> there were no stories. And the other episode, first episode of the series, there were stories. So I think I'm about even. I think the number of stories I told in episode one could cover both episode one and two. So now I'm starting from ground zero. And I can fold in stories. And so I will. And the note here is additives. Like, you know how I feel about additional steps. I had someone comment recently that um, I had to go back to look what the reference was. And and someone's always going to give me advice on how to manage, you know, worms and caterpillars and things on my greens. And I'm like, I tell y'all every time. This is what I'm going to do. I don't want to do anything else, yeah. right? And so I'm hard-headed about it. And so uh, the, the gardener came back and said, oh, did you try the something, something, something water um, pepper spray? And I was, you know, because I want to be polite because they were polite in their, you know, right. offer of um, this solution that I didn't ask for. But that's okay. <laughs> so I said, no, I haven't, you know, I didn't give it a try. And I'm like, I just, I don't, I don't like additional steps if I could help it. And so we've talked about on this show how this is the most damage, which is small in comparison. This is the most damage that I've seen to my um, leafy greens when I've made some attempt to try to manage it, right? It's just based on the new netting. right? And so you add this spray as a part of your routine and you lose track of, you add this Epsom salt, you lose track of what's needed versus now what's just a part of your routine. So now every year, or every time you're planting, you're adding this thing and do you need it? Did you really get your soil tested like the Farmer's Almanac recommended? A lot of people won't. Right. You know, it just becomes this ritual. It's a large that number that won't, too. Yeah. Now, it, was almost, it might as well have been in fine print. It was in parentheses. Yeah. Um, and so I just I I mean, go back to the old days in the OG episodes. So I'm, I'm going to be a lazy gardener about something. I have to be. Well, there has to be something that I don't do. You can't do it all. Well, and I mean, if you're if if you're having an issue and your first reaction is to go find a garden hack and try and fix your issue with that. Excuse the language, but you're fucking up. Like, straight up. do you up. feel like people, in the videos you see online, and do you feel like people are remedying a thing? Or do you feel like this is like, oh, did you add to, you know, Epsom salt to your tomato plants? Like, I feel like people are coming out of the gate and saying they're doing this. Damn, I love it when you transition me and I don't, I don't give you I'm any you. tips to do it. So, okay, let's do that. Let's talk about tomatoes. People add Epsom salts to tomatoes. I feel like I'm getting fired up. I feel like I need to calm down. You do need to calm down. So I'm going to talk yeah. for a second. So... Yeah. People use Epsom salts to combat blossom end rot on tomatoes, okay? The magnesium and the sulfur help with that. And mm-hmm. that is not a secret. It definitely will help. But let's talk about why you're getting the blossom end rot and why it's actually helping it. So, I told you earlier that it helps absorb the three nutrients, correct? Mm-hmm. I told mm-hmm. you that. So, it's m- more than likely... It's a calcium deficiency or it's a pH imbalance. It's either, I can't remember, it's too acidic or too base. I think it's too acidic is the one. But if you have low calcium inside of your garden, then it doesn't allow the nutrients to get up and it affects the water absorption of your plants. So by adding this, you may be fixing it for this small period of time, but in the future, moving forward, you're still going to have this situation. So you're constantly going to be adding that. So then the Mm -hmm. question becomes, well, how do I treat this? And it's, you, you do the tests, you figure out, you know, I got it really bad when every single watermelon that came up, got it. I -hmm. went and I got a calcium foiler spray, foliar spray, and I sprayed the leaves Worked like a champ. I stopped spraying it. They all died. So I was like, well, let me get it. I found out I was low in calcium and my pH was off. So as I talked to my extension service and I, I, I got my test and uh-huh. then I took it a step further and made a phone call because uh-huh. I was like, I didn't send an email. I didn't hit him up on social media. I picked up and I dialed the digits and I got him on the horn and I was like, hey man, first things first, I don't know what I'm looking at and I'm tired <laughs> of reading tutorials. And what is this, this and this cause? 
And then he broke it down for me. And he told me, he was like, and this is this guy's job, was only to answer questions. And he was like, the calcium deficiency is causing the water not to come up, which is causing the nutrients not to go up to the plant. So as you do these things and you're trying to combat it, you're actually causing, making it worse because you're not fixing it. And year after year, it's getting depleted more and more. And so that's the magnesium and sulfur working in it. So you need to add the calcium back into it. And there's all kinds of different, Mm -hmm. you know, I use, um, I use a crab shell mixture in my garden every other year to help with that. So as it breaks Mm -hmm. down the calcium from the shell adds to the garden, you know, get your pH tested and don't do a home pH test. Those things are dog dookie. Go get a, you know, most states will do it for free, but you're just masking a problem. And that's a, and then, you know, if you're just adding it as a preventative, whatever, but it's not really needed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Are you fired up still? Are you good? No, no, I'm ready. Okay, go. So, um, one of the things to note though, so when I think about getting a soil test, I think about, you know, putting some of the soil from one of my raised beds into a baggie. I do see this as a method often with containers because we know there is inherently challenges when it comes to planting in containers. I'm a huge fan of it. However, it's not the same as planting in soil and in ground, you know, like period. Right. Um, And so I wonder, am I dumping my my like potting mix into something and then having that sent for, you know, a sample? It's interesting because it feels like we're constantly amending things that are in containers. Um, Well, so I can tell you that I would not do that. I would just replace the soil because the way you do a soil sample is you get a randomized test. Mm -hmm. So you're going into your garden bed and you're getting it from like 10 to 20 different places at a certain Mm -hmm. depth. So, and it's a contained area. Now, if you go and you do it in a container, you're essentially going to have to do, if you have 20 containers, you're going to have to do 20 separate soil tests. And here's Mm -hmm. the key. You got to keep track of each one of those soil tests yourself. Let me tell you, because I screwed that up and had to go do a whole nother one because I didn't know which was which. So, um, based on that, like I, my recommendation is, and see the end of the benefit of the container is you can just take out half the soil and add half in, you know, you don't have to replace all of it all the time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, it's like macaroni and cheese. Like everyone, I mean, I've never had two people make macaroni and cheese and it tastes the same. Yeah. Right. You know, so the what you mix up to put into your unless everyone's just using the same bagged soil. Once you mix up something for your containers, it's going to be slightly different. And I mean, a lot of it is just by for a lot of us just by eye. Right. You know, I'm going to add this. I'm going to add that. And so I really I can't express enough. Make sure you really have a problem. Right. Make sure you know what the problem is pointing to. Yeah. You know, and before you start kind of with these Pinterest and IG solutions, um, we're quick, so quick to want to do something. And in some cases, it's it's not a thing that you need to do. Some cases, things will correct themselves. Blossom in rot is a different situation, you know, but man, let's stop starting something that you're ultimately not going to want to continue. So, um, I'm going to say two things here. One, a lot of times the easiest solution is not the correct solution. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to go get a bag of Epsom salt, take a bath, then put that dirty ass. I'm just joking about that, but you know, (laughs) put some Epsom salt in your garden. And then the other thing I want to talk about is a lot of people use it to aid in seed germination. Oh, I've not heard this one. Yeah, so they use it to um, add to seed starting mixes and stuff like that. And I want to say, I want to be very blunt about that and say, how dare you spit in the face of God and think that you need to help a seed grow by adding a nutrient to it? Because we don't, we take it for granted, but a seed is absolutely perfect. It's a small you know, basically a small capsule that holds enough nutrients and water inside of that 
seed in order to get that first root to start. Okay, that's a, that's magic if you ask me. And to get it to come up out of the ground, then you start adding to it. But if you start pumping it full of chemicals right away, and I mean, yeah, salt's not a chemical, but an additive, then you're not really giving it a chance. You know, I do all of my seed starting in peat moss and perlite, and maybe a little bit of compost. I'm even experimenting with not using compost now. And for the mm, first mm-hmm. month, I had nothing and they grow fine. So think about that. You know what I mean? Like it's not necessary to get a seed to germinate. So I am, for those that may be able to see me, I am emailing or messaging you now to add this link to Patreon. (laughs) Okay. To Patreon about um, is Epsom salt good or bad? And the highlights, again, Farmer's Almanac. It's, look, I'm all for it when they, I agree with what they're saying. The bottom line is what they're saying is um, don't, don't, don't do it if you feel like you have some deficiency. Get your stuff tested, which we said at the open opening. Um, and it also says that you know a bunch of plants can grow even if there is some deficiency in magnesium or sulfur. There's some things like roses and tomatoes and peppers, you know, and I'm sure melons is, are one of them, you know, that um, could suffer. But what happens when you add a thing and you already have enough of it? You can walk yourself into some other problems. Yeah. Um, the the seed starting. I mean, I just I'm gonna continue to beat the drum of try the simple way, and if the simple way and the simple way isn't adding these things, if the simple way doesn't work, and you try it again and it doesn't work, and you try it again and it doesn't work. All right, let's. It's like process of elimination in the reverse. All right, let's try to add one more thing to this mixture and see yeah. how that does. Right. I mean, I'm on the freaking third. Is it the third year or the fourth year? The third year of. Like rolling a dice with starting brassicas by seed. But there's only, there are small tweaks that I'm making and I'm not adding salt. Well, and that's the thing too is I've been starting seeds now for, I'm going to call it 12 years just to be safe. And I've never used a salt, Epsom salt, let's be clear, in that or in the years that I've, in, in my grandfather's garden, my garden, my granny's garden, and my mom's garden, nobody's ever put Epsom salt in anything, and they've all had bumper crops. Hell, one of them supported their entire family off of that, and mm-hmm. another one gave 95% of the food to a homeless shelter and fed mm-hmm. them off of it with no Epsom salt. All he used was fertilizer and water, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, enough said, you know what I mean? So I don't think it's necessary. I don't think it's important to use. I don't think it's required. I don't, I don't even think of it as an option personally. Where do you stand? My uneducated, and I mean that literally, my uneducated response here is, is fiction. Am I too early? It fiction. No. Like I just, I, it's perfect. It's a no for me. Yeah. It. <laughs> and oh, and oh, don't use it. Um, but, you know, seriously, you know, after we've bad mouthed it this whole time, if you want to use it in your garden, go for it. But just, you know, we, Batavia and I, and even Leonard, believe it or not, we all truly care about your gardens and we want you to have the most, you know, bountiful harvest you can. And that being said, we don't want you to mask a problem that you could already have. So just be very careful when you do these kinds of things and start with a soil test, you know, because you don't want salts to build up inside of your garden Mm -hmm. and it can happen even though it is water soluble. Like if you do it wrong or you don't know what you're doing, you know, then it could be an issue because a lot of these hack sites that you see, they don't care about your garden at all. They're going to tell you whatever they want. And they're just, you know, you don't even know if you honestly don't even know if they even use Epsom salt in that plant. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I have plants mm-hmm. out there growing next to each other. One's yellow, one's green. Why is that? I don't know. But there's no Epsom salts. You know what I'm saying? I could do a whole <laughs> video series about that. But so just be careful, everybody. We want your gardens you, to be good. If you're 
a long time user of this looks i'm not trying to you know step on your toes nope, if this is what all. you're doing and and you're comfortable with it now rock on yeah um I'm a part of a part of the pleasure of doing this show is we get a chance to share what we are doing or not or what we believe or not so here we are well and to be fair 15 minutes ago the hardcore user is e- either clicked off or is now cussing us out so <laughs> and it's cool you know there's yeah, people yeah, that are really play. passionate about this kind of stuff so yeah um all right everybody be safe, be cool, um, stay cool, and grow some food, and use Epsom salts in the bath. <laughs> See ya. See ya. We hope you enjoyed today's show. Please follow us on YouTube at Backyard Gardens TV. Instagram at Backyard Gardens TV. Over on our website, BackyardGardensTV.com. And then we have Patreon at Backyard Gardens. And don't forget to check out our links below to help the show. Thank you so much for joining us as we learn to grow and grow for change. Cut. Now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time. All over the world, people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Backyard Gardens podcast. If you like what we're doing and you want to continue to support the podcast, head over to our Patreon page to sign up. You can also make a one-time donation using PayPal. Both of these links are in the description. With your support, we can continue growing and helping others in their gardens. See ya. If you guys want some Backyard Gardens gear, go to the link below and check out our t-shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and other gear. All purchases go towards helping to support the show, so thank you so much in advance, and we hope you enjoy. We want everybody to have a garden, and we're going to give you a chance to win free seeds every month. Head over to BackyardGardensTV.com and enter your email address to be entered in all of our giveaways. Good luck! We want you to be a part of our gardening community. DM us a picture of your garden at Backyard Gardens TV on Instagram, and we will share it with our listeners.